Welcome to the Fabulous Lifestyle Radio Show. Tune in for a vibrant mix of fashion, finance, and life's essential foundations. Join us for expert interviews, insightful discussions, and empowering insights to elevate your lifestyle. From fashion trends to financial tips and personal growth strategies, we've got you covered. So grab your headphones and get ready to be inspired. Tune in now to the Fabulous Lifestyle Radio Show and embark on this exciting journey with us. Welcome back to the Fabulous Lifestyle Radio Show. I am your host, M. Teresa Lawrence, and today we are privileged to have Nancy Wright with us talking about healthy eating habits and especially sugar. I'm going to go back to high fructose corn syrup and the list of sugar names on, on labels, and I understand that you have some guidance and some help mm-hmm. that you can provide the audience mm-hmm. with. Mm-hmm. Um, if you could... The hidden names of sugar, yeah. Yeah. So if your audience goes to my Instagram page or handle, it's Nancy the Health Coach, so it looks like me, the brunette with purple background. And if they just DM me the word fabulous lifestyle, I will send them the hidden names of sugar. It's a terrific PDF. And also the food additive handout. Um, It's really good. It talks about food additives that are in our food and, and the causes. Like some people have migraines, some people have asthma, allergies. It's a fabulous sheet, and I really want to provide that for your audience. So again, go to the IG handle, Instagram handle, Nancy the Health Coach, N-A-N-C-Y-T-H-E-H-E-A-L-T-H-C-O-A-C-H, Nancy the Health Coach, text or DM Fabulous Lifestyle, and I will provide those handouts, the hidden names of sugar and the food additive handout. Oh, thank you so much. So useful. And now we're going to go back in time. Mm. We're going to ask you about your young self. Oh. Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> so well, good. If, if you were looking at yourself from above mm. and you wanted to give yourself advice mm-hmm. as going through the process of life, what would you say to your younger self? I would say don't drink soda, Nancy. I drank I'm embarrassed to say this, a lot of soda my parents didn't know because I grew up riding horses and there was a vending machine at the barn. (laughs) So I would take change and buy Mountain Dew. I was so hooked on Mountain Dew. Now, keep in mind, I'm 10 or 12. I have no idea, but I was probably having the greatest time of my (laughs) life riding my pony. I would not drink sodas. And I drank about three of them a day. And I wondered why I have a mouthful of cavities. And you know, when you drink a lot of sugar too, it can really wreak havoc on your gut. And it was like a snowball effect happened to me. Now I'm approaching late 50s. And over time, you know, your teens and what you put in your body day after day, believe me, it it adds up. It catches up to you. So I would tell my younger self, no sodas, no diet sodas. I totally agree with you. Now I have to share with you. So I'm in college, and tab was very popular mm. then. And I would sit, and I would, and I would do my papers, and I would drink tab. And one day, like the taste was just horrible, mm-hmm. and my body was telling me I was poisoning my body. Mm-hmm. So I stopped drinking soda, and mm-hmm. I never touched soda mm-hmm. for the rest of my life. And in my house, we had soda because my husband and my son like soda, but my husband too with the Mountain Dew. Mm -hmm. Um, And then the same thing happened to him. He was like, I, I, I can't drink this anymore. Mm -hmm. And we took it out of our house and just, we realized the health benefits of doing that. Now, don't Mm -hmm. get me wrong. If you love soda, you know, it's a personal choice what you do with Mm -hmm. your, with your drinking habits. But for me, Soda, except for Pellegrino, for seltzer, I'm all mm-hmm. up for that, people. Mm-hmm. I, I just don't think it's very helpful to the body. Um, and I think if you are fortunate enough to have a body that tells you when something mm-hmm. is hurting you, mm-hmm. you should listen. That's right. And that's interesting that happened to you because when I was drinking diet soda, my stomach hurt so bad. And it was in the 20s and I never touched it again. Oh, but that's what I wanted to mention with you. You were talking about you know, Mountain Dew and sugars, but that's regular soda. The diet soda does the same thing. It's just, yeah, I, I believe, I'm trying to recall, I think it was the diet soda. And the diet soda has aspartame in it. Or most, most have, and that's a chemical additive that is so terrible for your brain. So, you know, where, where I was trained, if you were to walk into Dr. Sears' 
practice in San Clemente, Orange County, that's Southern California, he has soda bottles, and I believe diet soda bottles, with a wrapper around it that calls it diabetes in a bottle. Because he's trying Ooh, to shock his good patients. Marketing. Good, right? marketing. And, uh, good marketing. Isn't that a shocker, right? So I thought, oh, that's good. Yeah. So when you work with, with clients who have diabetes, mm -hmm. do you usually find that they have that they drink a lot of soda? I mean, is that like oh, part of the depends. process? Oh, it depends. It depends. You know, we're all different. I would say ice cream's probably the hardest. I'm trying to think of the last gal that I coached. It was... It, it, it usually is liquid and, and ice cream. Ice cream is is the hardest for most, I would say. And that's liquid sugar, you know. That is liquid sugar, yeah. So what we do is we just try to get them to not quit at cold turkey, but just try to, you know, it's it's little wins along the way that, that can change your palate, honestly. So if they just stop eating it and they find a replacement or they exercise, or they do something else with their time, and they start to feel better, they'll quit it, they'll quit it. You know, when I, I never thought in a million years I could give up Ben and Jerry's, but now if I taste it, I don't like it, because your palate changes, and it's too sweet. It's like, oh, this is awful. So I want to ask you this question about alcohol, alcohol and diabetes, and I'm bringing this up because this entire year I've been leaning into fear, I've been leaning into public speaking, and I didn't want anything to get in the way of me facing that fear. Mm -hmm. So because, you know, before I'd just have a glass of wine and I'd become very social. And <laughs> my goal is to get on stage and basically be able to deal with any situation mm -hmm. without anything helping me or... Mm -hmm. And so with diabetes and the sugar issue, mm -hmm. what is the relationship with alcohol? Because people like to drink. This is right. a really important question. <laughs> right. And alcohol does, I don't know a whole lot, you know, because mm. I'm not a nutritionist, mm. but I know that, you know, alcohol does have sugar and that could be hard. There's actually coaches that coach people on quitting alcohol. That wouldn't really be my lane. No, no, I'm not talking yeah. about quitting it. I'm just yeah. talking about clients when they, when they say. What about alcohol? Yes. With the uh -huh. sugar. So it does have a lot of sugar in it. it, it I, from what I understand, I believe it's, I'm not sure if it's red wine or, or wine, I believe has a lot of alcohol. I'd have to look and, okay. and see. I, I don't drink. I don't drink. I do drink a little bit of red wine, but I do know it has sugar. I haven't really done a late, let's just say I haven't done label reading on alcohol, okay. but I do know that it, that it does have sugar. And I think beer you have to stay away from too, but I, I don't know too much about that. So. Oh, okay. Yes. I don't know too much. It's just the little baby steps of throttling back is what helps. Is and what then, I would tell you. With your clients, are there common mistakes that you see people mm -hmm. doing? Yes. And one, I, I probably jumped the gun. One is the Starbucks. Oh, but Nancy, it's sugar free. I'm like, but is it sugar free? No, that's. No, that's not sugar free. If that's not Nancy approved, if if they were to put that in a <laughs> Nancy lab, approved. if they were to put that in a lab, they would pro and I were to pull up their sugar packets, it would probably be twenty five. That's how full they have them. But the biggest mistake I see is, and this is what the food companies do a great job on, is marketing misleading claims. Let me give an example. A very popular cereal is Cheerios. Cheerios has a yellow banner across it that says cholesterol lowering. It has a red cereal bowl in the shape of a heart. You know, it's touting itself as heart healthy. But is it? <laughs> because if you look at it, it's, we always say it's sugar, sugar, and added sugar and stuff. So that's what I mean, misleading claims. Here's another one. Trader Joe's makes a meringue cookie. And I was with my mother, and I saw, oh, fat-free. And I love meringue cookies. It was around the holidays, you know. And I'm like, oh, fat-free. Mm -hmm. I turn over the back of it because I know better, and sugar is the first ingredient. Now, what did I say? If it's the first three ingredients, it's mainly sugar and salt. So they take out the fat, but they throw in the sugar, and sugar makes us fat. So it's the misleading claims that I see. Those are the mistakes, right? Oh, wow. That's like, Here's another that's really one. important. It's really important. Mm. Do you want to hear one more? Yes. This please. is my favorite. It's Okay, so when you eat a salad, that's green light food, right? It's Think traffic light eating. Eat as much green salad as you want, right? Because it's so healthy for you, full of antioxidants. Now you take a Brianna salad dressing, and the red one has a big, fat, juicy graphic a picture of a strawberry. It's a beautiful-looking strawberry. So you think there's a strawberry in it. But if you look closely on the tie, it says there's no real strawberry. It's full of sugar. 
the first ingredient is sugar. So you're like taking a tablespoon of sugar, which is a red light food, and you're pouring that on a green light food, which is a salad. And it's red because it has red wine vinegar in it. So most of us are in a hurry when we're grocery shopping. I mean, I never read labels before I you know, got into this. So you, you pull it off the shelf because it's so pretty, but really it's full of sugar. So that's misleading. That's misleading. And the third one I see are bagels. Cause, bagels? Uh, one bagel. <laughs> I'm from New York. Bagels. <laughs> I know. I, I know. I love the New York bagels. One bagel is equal to 11 teaspoons of sugar. So there you go. So you're over your limit already, Teresa. Unless you get like a whole grain bagel. But most of those bagels are refined and they will spike your blood sugar pretty quickly. So be careful of the bagels. Sorry to tell you. It's a, it's it's a weekend bagel. It's a weekend bagel. bagel. There you go. <laughs> it's a fun bagel to have on the weekends, yes. It's your cheap bagel. <laughs> yes. If you wanted to give our listeners resources in addition to yours, where would you point them to? Oh, if they listen to podcasts, I highly recommend Dr. Mark Hyman, H-Y-M-A-N. Oh, I actually bought his book. Oh, you did? Yeah, I did. Well, there you go. And his podcast is called Doc Pharmacy, and pharmacy is spelled, so it's D-O-C, pharmacy is spelled F-A-R-M, so think of the farm, A-C-Y. Doc Pharmacy, I love. The other podcast I like is Dishing Up Nutrition. That's a good one. And as far as books, is I love the food babe. I use her cookbooks. And she's the food activist that went after Chick-fil-A and Subway Sandwich. Look her up, the food babe. She's all over the internet. She has books. I'm not sure if she has a podcast. And if they have high blood sugar and they have to watch it or they're on a glucose monitor, then the Glucose Buddy app is a good one to track your blood sugar. It's called the Glucose Buddy. I've never, I don't have pre-diabetes or diabetes, but I've just heard good things about it. All right. Thank you so much. It's perfect timing. It's time for a break. We'll be right back. Welcome to the Fabulous Lifestyle Radio Show, where we talk about food, fashion, finance, and foundations of life. We are live on KCAA Radio Broadcasting Network. KCAA is affiliated with CNBC, NBC News, and NBC Sports. We are sponsored by Sheltered Studios, Fire Connect, and Building Solid Foundations. 